Hot Springs has always blessed people's eyes with its natural beauty. From all parts of time, people have been attracted to Hot Springs. But the beauty that Hot Springs displayed came with a dark side. Not just everyday, peace-loving civilians were attracted to Hot Springs. Criminals, gangsters, rich and poor, all came to Hot Springs for more than just its beauty. But what were these attractions that brought in all these powerful people? It wasn't only gangsters that were attracted to Hot Springs, but the main reason they were attracted here, you know, of course we had the springtime baseball started here, and a lot of really wealthy people and a lot of poor people came here for the baths originally. And then when the mob started coming down here with Capone and Torrio, they realized that the people here were pretty hospitable and that the law was all for them as long as they caused no trouble. And it's kind of a weird thing, even in the Indian days, Hot Springs, this valley here was a, a peaceful valley. The waters were thought to be sacred by the Indians. And that, I guess that kind of, that spirit kind of transcended through into even modern days. But Capone and Torrio could be themselves here and walk around and really not fear anything, even while some of their rival monsters like Moran and uh, some of the other side of Chicago's gang was here, staying at a different hotel. They just didn't seem to fight when they were here, and that spread pretty quickly. Uh, and spread it did. Hot Springs was soon known across America as a safe haven for even the most notorious and powerful gangsters. Big names such as Lucky Luciano, Alvin Carpus, Owen Madden, and even Al Capone all began making their way into Hot Springs, Arkansas. Illegal activities such as gambling, prostitution, and bootlegging were all booming in Hot Springs. The number one place to go during all this was the Southern Club. This gambling and entertainment facility was established in 1893 and providing a hangout for gangsters. Everything from slot machines to rolling dice and blackjack occupied their time. But the Southern Club wasn't the only hot spot for gangsters. I think probably the hottest spot was the uh, Southern Club. The Southern Club was open pretty much around the clock. The Belvedere uh, out on Highway 7, Park Avenue, North Park Avenue, was out of the city limits then. That was a big casino, formerly known as the Chicago Inn. It changed into Belvedere the day of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, as a matter of fact. So the Southern Club, the Belvedere, prior to that the Chicago Inn, the Ohio Club is still the oldest bar in Arkansas. That was always a hot spot. It was later the Ohio Cigar Store, and it went back to being the Ohio Club uh, after Prohibition ended, but they always sold alcohol, they just did it in the back rooms there, so it was always really the Ohio Club. Though these gangsters seemed like peaceful citizens while in Hot Springs, the truth was that they all brought some form of crime in their wake, in forms such as bootlegging, gambling, and prostitution. Though this helped Hot Springs flourish, there were still crimes. So what were the police doing about it? What made these men so untouchable? The police were kind of in on it. Everybody made money off of it, even the churches. Uh, the gambling community here in Hot Springs were real quick to split up the bounty at the end of the month or the end of the week with everyone concerned in the town. All of the waiters made more money, all of the merchants made more money, the police made more money because the police and the firemen generally worked in the casinos after their tour of duty or after their, their, their scheduled tour that evening, they would go work. So we had the moniker here, a lot of times McLaughlin, the mayor for uh, 40 years here, was asked, accused of uh, letting the police guard the gangsters. Well, in fact, they were really just working at the casino. They could make $6 a week working as a policeman. They could make $600 a week working in the casino with tips, even back in the 30s and 40s. So it was, again, it was just a monetary uh, thing. It was better for the city. It was revenue for the city. Everyone got along with it for quite a long time. Uh, some reformists started acting up and that uh, stirred things up and that, that kind of led to a, a bit of a problem and eventually the shutting down of uh, gambling, illegal gambling here. But having Hot Springs police on their side wasn't enough to make these major felons feel comfortable. In order to keep hidden from the public, the gangsters had secret passages underground solely for the purpose of allowing the gangsters to move from building to building undetected and make quick escapes if necessary. What you're seeing now is the entrance to the tunnel hidden in what was once the Southern Club, but is now the Josephine Tussaud Wax Museum. But no matter who you are or the resources you possess, the law catches up with you. Lucky Luciano was named by the FBI as the man who organized organized crime in the United States. 
Luciano was one of the largest alcohol distributors in the U.S. In the 1920s and 30s during Prohibition, Luciano would visit Hot Springs to get away from his stressful life in New York. But just being in town caused the alcohol to flow into Hot Springs. New York Detective John J. Brennan noticed this, and on April 1, 1936, the detective began his plan to take Luciano down. On June 18, 1936, Luciano was finally arrested and sentenced to 30 to 50 years in Dannemora Prison in New York. Alvin Carpus was the co-leader of the Ma Barker Gang, along with Fred Barker. This gang committed several bank robberies, along with two kidnappings. After the gang's last kidnapping, fingerprints of the gang member Doc Barker were collected by the FBI, thus leading to the downfall of the notorious gang. With the FBI catching up with the other gang members, the remaining members, Carpus and Fred Hunter, were still on the run. The two stayed at places such as Lake Catherine, Lake Hamilton, and Malvern to evade the police. Police evaded his home on Malvern March 30, 1936, only to find out that the two already left to New Orleans. On May 1st, Carpus and Hunter were apprehended by the FBI. Carpus pled guilty on July 27th and was sentenced to life in prison at Alcatraz. Owen Madden, aka the English Godfather, joined the Gopher Gang in 1902 and in 1914 was arrested for the murder of Patsy Doyle and then sentenced to 20 years in Sing Sing Prison in Austin, New York. He was released on parole after nine years. On 1932, he broke parole by being involved with the murder of Vincent Cole. To avoid the law and rival gangs, he moved to Hot Springs in 1935 in search of a more quiet town. The native New York gangster made most of his fast profits off of bootlegging, real estate, boxing, gambling, and entertainment. He became a powerful resident in Hot Springs and established himself after he married his lovely wife, Agnes Denby. He eventually got caught up when the FBI brought down the Southern Club and found out Oni had invested into the gambling facility. When he went to court, he answered every question with the Fifth Amendment. Before he could be prosecuted, he died a year later from emphysema in April 24, 1965. Al Capone came to the spa city around the early 1920s. Al was responsible for dozens of murders and made a $100 million fortune from being the crime boss of Chicago. He would visit Hot Springs to re-up on his liquor business, but didn't just come down to make money, he came down to spend it too. He stayed at the Majestic Hotel before renting out a whole floor at the Arlington. And if a cab drove him to a different location, he would tip as much as $100. On October 17, 1931, Al Capone was convicted of income tax evasion and later sentenced to 11 years in federal prison in Alcatraz. Though the era of gangsters is all but over, the men that ruled it will forever be remembered in infamy. The history of Hot Springs is riddled with the ghost of gangsters past and will forever be the symbol of what those so-called kings of crime once were.